Good morning everybody, I hope you're having a great day today. My name's Cody and I want to thank you so much for stopping by the farm. Today we're going to take a really close look at one of my favorite trees out here on the farm. And now this one in particular, you know, we call it the grandmother tree. It's actually a Manitoba maple and the botanical name is Acer Nagundu. In most of the world, I think this tree is kind of considered an invasive weed. It uh, is very prolific, it spreads all these little seed clusters here. Oh, let me see if I can grab one. Um, these guys here just by the thousands once you have a mature tree. So they can be quite um, invasive, I suppose, in your environment. In our environment though, it is harsh to grow anything here. So anything that we can get to grow is fantastic. For the permaculture use of this tree, it's great. We can tap it for maple water, which we can actually make maple syrup out of. The seed pods are edible. It's a hardy tree. It grows really well with very minimal care. And on the prairies here, anything that you can add to your permaculture setup, um, to your garden, that is not only a food source, but something that's gonna survive with no care is a great addition to your garden. So I just wanna go over a little bit about what this tree is, the benefits of it, and um, let's get right into it. But first, let's go over to another tree. I've got uh, some stuff going on there. So a lot of people know about maple syrup and what you can do with that. And typically when you're gonna tap a maple tree, you're looking for a sugar maple and they have obviously a higher sugar content, which means you're gonna have a sweeter syrup. But what a lot of people don't know, especially in our area, is that these guys here, these um, Acer Nagundu, or the Manitoba maple, the box elder, whatever you wanna call it, you can also tap it and you can get maple sap out of it and you can actually turn that into maple syrup too. On the prairies here, to be able to plant a tree that can produce a nice sugar source for you is is phenomenal. There's not much you can do. Maybe you get sugar beets, you could do that. Um, but that's pretty much it. To have a tree that can do it in on a much larger scale is just fantastic. So down here, what I've done is I've got it's quarter inch, I don't know, tubing of some sort, and I had a quarter inch drill bit. I drilled into these trees just like you would any maple tree if you've done that sort of thing before, and then I've just inserted this tubing into the tree about uh, you know an inch or so and what that does is the sap will collect in this hole come down this tube and into uh, this bucket here this one's been collecting for a little while now and we've got probably close to 10 liters out of this one branch in this area now that's fantastic we'll take the lid off here and have a quick little look inside So a lot of people don't know that you can actually tap our maple trees here and get a, a well, maple sap out of it. And if you want, you can boil this down and you will get a maple syrup. Now it's not gonna be like what you get from the store. These aren't sugar maples, so they're not going to be as sweet as what you would expect, but they do create a sweet syrup if you boil it down. What I prefer to do with this is, is rather than turn it into a maple syrup, is I, I like to freeze this because the maple sap in and of itself is a great addition to your diet. It's full of magnesium and calcium and zinc and a lot of different, I think there's what, 47 different um, active compounds in here that go to our health they help with digestion help with regulating our blood sugar there's lots of benefits to just drinking the maple sap um, it will spoil on you if you don't store it um, properly so in a freezer is a great way to do that and it's just fantastic so when you're looking for a maple to tap you want to make sure that the main trunk is at least eight inches in diameter just to make sure it's a nice healthy size and that your tap isn't going to actually hurt the tree now if you do it right, you're not going to hurt the tree anyway just because it's a small hole that will heal itself up over the year. So you don't want to fill that hole in with anything. Just let the tree do its thing. So we've got a nice big branch here. Now we're getting kind of late in the season for this. So if you wait too long, the sap's going to be a little bit more sour. So if the tree has started to break bud and starts to leaf out, you don't want to tap them anymore. You're going to get a sour sap. You don't want that. What you want is a nice sweet sap. So before the buds actually develop and start to open, is really when you're going to want to harvest. Uh, you also want to make sure that your nighttime lows are below freezing and the daytime highs are above freezing. And what that's going to do is create a pressure difference within the roots and that's going to send that sap up the tree there and start feeding the leaf growth. So that's how you're actually collecting it. And uh, yeah. So I'm just going to tap this one here really quick just to show you how, uh, how I do it. Find a spot on the tree. Typically people like it at around chest height. And uh, that's just convenient, I think, for harvesting. So here's a nice spot. And what you want to do is come in with your drill. It's a quarter inch drill. Come in at just a slight upward angle. And that's going to allow the sap to collect and then pool down just naturally through gravity. If you went down into it, you're not going to have that same nice flow and drip. So let's go into it a little bit.
There we go, we've got our nice little hole there that's a quarter inch. And then what I do is I take my tubing, which is also a quarter inch, and it fits tight and snug into that hole. You can push it right in there. And when this tree starts to flow that sap from the roots, when it starts to warm up in the daytime, that sap is gonna flow up here, get stuck at this hole, and then come down this tubing into our collector bucket. Oh, there's a train, she's running by. And what you can do is you can collect sap. Now each one of these tree trunks here can produce, I think it's what, 10 to 15 liters per, maybe gallons, I don't know. I know that's a huge difference in volume, but uh, anyway, 10 to 15 units per, um, per branch. And, and that's quite a lot. There's probably 50 maple trees in this row here, and each one has, you know, three or four different arms on it. So you can get uh, just, you can get quite a lot of sap out of this little area here. There we go. And then once this line is all set up, we will stick this into our collector pail. Make sure that everything is flowing down, right? You want gravity to kind of do that work for you. And come back in the morning after a nice day of uh, some sunshine above zero temperatures, and you're gonna end up with a lot of sap. So you know it's the end of the season when your buds start to break. Now these are two different versions here. This is a seed bud head, and this is just the leaf head bud. Um, they're quite different. This one has, you know, like the, the immature seeds. This one has the leaf. But you will notice that these are no longer contained within the plant. They have actually broken bud. And that's what I mean when I say that you don't want to collect sap from these types of trees. They're starting to um, change the sugar content in the sap, and it's just going to be sour for you. So once you get to this stage, you don't want to tap that tree anymore. Let it kind of have the rest of the year to recoup and recover. Uh, the neat thing about these seed bud heads is that they are edible. And then you can eat them. Right now, it kind of tastes like a mix of, um, like beans. They taste like beans. And like I say, as far as the permaculture aspect of these maple trees, for our area anyway, I know if you're watching outside of this zone, you're probably screaming at the screen right now, don't plant this tree. And I get that because they can be very invasive. But in our area, you get a year round food source. The seed heads themselves, once they mature, you can use those, crack the seeds open, grind that into a flower, and you can use that. In the early spring, you get these delicious, little immature seed heads and yeah it's just like a nice addition to your salad hmm. <clears throat> those are really good and so it's just a great all-around tree to have the maple sap in and of itself is just a great thing to have on hand in your freezer like I say it's packed full of nutrition for you and once you get these trees established they're good for for a long time now these trees are rather short-lived compared to most of the other maples maybe 50 60 years on these guys but like I say in our area anything that you can do to add to your food force is is a huge benefit for sure so these are actually really good <laughs> let's see what else do I need to talk about for these guys I'm sure I forgot something if you have any questions about the Manitoba maple let me know in the comments down below and I'm happy to have that discussion with you every five minutes there's a plane flying overhead hmm. those seeds are really good I wonder what the buds taste like also really good they're a little bit more bitter but I know you put that in your salad you wouldn't know that you're eating uh, maple buds that's that's really good all right now for the uh, coupe d'etat let's look at uh, boiling this sap down and let's get some maple syrup going we have about 20 liters of the sap here maple sap now it has sat probably a lot longer outside than it should have, so it does have a bit of an off smell to it. And um, well, let me just taste it here real quick. But it doesn't taste sour. And I think for me that's the important thing here. So ideally this is a lot more clear. And so if you've done this before and you've seen how cloudy and murky this is, um, I'm having a, a strong inkling to believe that this isn't normal. But um, it tastes good, it smells a little off, but um, I think once we get it boiled, who knows, maybe uh, 
and maybe that'll change it as well here. But um, ideally, you collect the sap every day and you process it as quickly as possible just because it will go rancid on you. And that's something that you want to keep in mind, but it tastes fine. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it. So 20 liters here. I think the conversion rate is 50 liters of sap. And again, this is going to depend a lot on what kind of trees you've got, but it's a 50 to one. So you'll need 50 liters of sap to make one liter of maple syrup. And that is just a mind blowing stat for me because it's just this whole thing. Um, well, if it was full to here, um, wherever here, yeah, 25, that, this whole thing would just give you half a liter of syrup. It's just mind blowing to me. But um, anywho, let's get this spoiled off and see what we end up with. Alright, now that we've got the sap on the stove here, and we just wait. So we're going to get this up to a boil. I'm going to reduce the heat just a little bit, make sure it's nice and bubbly. I don't want it to burn though, so I'm going to keep a close eye on it. And we still have about 15 liters here left to boil down. Well, I guess it's 20 altogether, but it'll take a few cycles to do, but that's okay. I'll uh, speed it up so you guys don't have to watch a, a pot boil. And then we'll just jump to the end here. So let's, uh, let's hope it works out well for us. the farmhouse here this is a jar of sauerkraut that I made what is it three or four months ago and um, just left it in the fridge there and it smells unbelievable again I just can't believe how simple it was to make our own sauerkraut and like I say it's just been sitting in the jar here for I have to go back and check but I feel like it's been three or four months mm. the flavor has gotten fantastic it hasn't spoiled, I don't know why it would have, but it's, um, it's even better of a flavor now that it's been sitting for four months rather than when it was a lot fresher. So another great way to um, preserve our, our food for the, the long winter, this um, homemade sauerkraut. <laughs> Unbelievable. We boil it down quite a lot now and you can see the bubbles are starting to form, but they look like they're going, they're breaking a little bit slower than they had previously. Now I don't have any special way to tell whether this is done or not. I know there's some sugar sampling tools that you can get, or a hydrometer I suppose is another way you could do it to check the specific gravity. But um, for my purposes here, I'm just going to give it a good old fashioned taste test. And based on the way the sugar is boiling here, I think we're getting pretty close. But uh, let's give her a taste. Get my cup in there. A little bit there. Here we go. Pot's still boiling. Got my little sample here. It looks pretty good. Still a little runny compared to what you'd expect a maple syrup to be like. But let's give her a taste. Unbelievable. It is massively sweet. It tastes like maple syrup. This is, I'm gonna turn the heat off because I think we're done. Uh, this has been an unbelievable success, you know. I didn't expect our Manitoba maples to produce something that you can definitely tell it's not like a sugar maple, just on like that classic maple flavor. But it is sweet, it is earthy, it's all around just fantastically delicious. And we have the trees here, you know. And um, if you're thinking about, nice and sticky too, if you're thinking about adding a Manitoba maple to your yard, don't be afraid. I know a lot of people even in our area call these plants weeds, but um, just being able to get this product off of them, it, it's mind-blowing. I wish you could taste this. It's unbelievable. Like I say, it's sweet. Um, it tastes really, really good. And for just a silly little experiment like this, you know, I'm, I'm completely and utterly blown away. I'm so happy. This is such a great, uh, great unexpected turn of events. There we go, everybody. So we are finished with our maple syrup experiment. We started out here with 25 liters of sap and we boiled it all the way down to get our half a liter of maple syrup. Look at that. Isn't that just the craziest thing? I've lived here my whole life. Grandpa planted those maple trees 60 plus years ago. It just as a shelter belt, like a windbreak from that, you know, vicious prairie wind. And they've been here forever and we've never tapped them. You know, we never thought to. Uh, and it's just one of those things where 
you kind of lose sight of the things that you have right in front of you just because, you know, they're not what's supposed to be done, if that makes sense, you know? Like, you're supposed to tap sugar maples. That's where you get the sugar from. You can tap any maple, honestly. That's what I've found here. Manitoba maples are probably the least likely of anyone, any maple that you would think that you could actually get syrup from. But if you're in my area, um, you know, Calgary, uh, Alberta area, you know, and you've got a, a Manitoba maple in your yard, tap it it's absolutely worth it you know we have half a half a liter of syrup here at the end of the day but honestly it's unbelievable to go through that whole process and just experience it you know it was so fun i had my daughter out there she was with the, the dewalt drill drilling trees and sticking lines and she had a great time doing it you know so anyway i'm just gonna wrap it up here guys thank you so much for watching this video i really do appreciate it and yeah have a great rest of your day with whatever it is that you get up to until next time we'll catch you later bye now